This past October 10, the much-anticipated update to Luminar Neo version 1.21 was released, and in this video, we're going to be looking at its new features and whether you should upgrade. So let's get right into it. Before we go on to the features, let's run through the pricing. The good news for customers is Luminar Neo has been aggressively priced in the past year. In terms of subscriptions, it costs just $50 a year, which is less than half an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. In terms of perpetual license, Luminar Neo costs $79, which seems to be priced to match On One Photo Raw, which also costs $79. Now let's go on to the features. The first new or improved feature is Generative AI. Luminar Neo's Generative AI includes tools GenArrays, GenSwap, and GenExpand, which are used to perform useful tasks such as removing distractions, replacing elements via text prompts, and expanding a scene. As a reminder, Generative AI was released in October last year, and I thought back then that it was a smart move by Luminar so as to differentiate their software from their competitors in the crowded photo editing space. Disappointingly though, in actual use, the performance was subpar, particularly when compared to Photoshop's generative fill. If you need a reminder, here are some examples of the results you would get using the previous version of GenSwap. As you can see, it clearly is not great and particularly unusable when it comes to people and faces. Well, the good news is in 1.21, the quality of GenSwap has drastically been improved, looking more detailed and realistic than cartoony as in the previous version. Here are a few other examples. The improvement in generative AI also extends to Generase, which is used to remove distractions. Here is the result using the older version of Generase, and here is the result with the new version of Generase, a big improvement. Generase has also improved this performance in removing large distractions. Previously, Generase would incorrectly replace rather than remove a large distraction. So those were some of the improvements of Generative AI. Let's move on to the second improvement. The second improvement is better photo management. In the previous version of Luminar Neo, photo management was really just an afterthought. While you could perform tasks like keyword search of files and folders, or favorite or reject a photo, other than that, there wasn't much you could do. Well, in 1.21, photo management has been made much more useful. The first improvement in this regard is search. In addition to keyword search, you get a machine learning based search wherein you could type keywords such as tree, sunset, or dog and Luminar Neo will retrieve photos that visually contain those elements. Pretty handy. The second improvement in photo management is in filtering. You can now filter photos based on metadata like capture date, camera model, ISO, etc. One nice touch of filtering by camera model is Luminar does the job of retrieving the camera models available in your catalog and automatically displays them as a list. So there is no need to type a keyword to specify the camera you want to filter. Luminar Neo now also supports star rating as an additional way to organize your photos. You can rate photos in both catalog and film strip mode, where film strip is also a new feature in version 1.21. The third improvement is color transfer. If you've ever wanted to mimic the colors or look of another photo, whether it be one you've previously edited yourself or a photo you found on the internet, then you'll probably love this new feature. To demonstrate it, let's work on this image. To access color transfer, I'll navigate to the creative panel. I'll choose color transfer. I'll set a reference image. As you can see, there are already some sample reference images. Let's try a few. Color transfer does a great job of matching the overall colors and tones of the reference image and applying it to your photo. Of course, you can also choose your own reference photo. As you can see, with just one click, 
the sky and the rest of the elements have been turned to aqua, nicely mimicking the reference photo. Let's try another one. This time, the reference photo has a vivid blue sky with a goldish colored foreground. Let's see how the image will appear after color transfer. And there you go. As you can see, the sky has now acquired a more saturated blue color while the foreground has taken a pleasant golden hue just like the reference image. Pretty nice. The fourth improvement is color masking. Believe it or not, Luminar's color masking is already the third masking tool released this month following DxO Photolab and ACDC. Why so many companies are releasing color masking tools is beyond me, but 2024 seems to be the year of the color mask. In case you didn't know, color mask lets you create masks based on specific colors. To demonstrate, let's work on this image. Let's enhance the local contrast in the sky and water. While I could use its powerful object select masking to do that job, for this task, I'll use color mask to take advantage of the distinct blue hue. From the structure panel, I'll click masking. I'll click color. I'll select a color from the sky. And with just one click, a pretty precise mask. I'll adjust the range. I'll refine the mask with a brush. And unlike other raw editors, Color Mask works with a greater number of masking tools, not just the brush. And there you go, a nice result. Let's mask another item. This time, I'll target the foliage, which is characterized by a distinct green color. Once again, I'll click the Color Mask. I'll pick a green color from the grass. Unfortunately, in this case, the Color Mask is not too accurate including elements such as the woman's dress, which is not green at all. Not sure why Luminar is including it. Lowering the range also does not help. In such a case, I would recommend using an alternative masking tool such as Object Select instead. So there you have it, four new features of Luminar Neo 1.21. Is it worth the upgrade? I would say if you're already a Luminar Neo user, definitely. The performance of generative AI, while far from perfect, is a big jump from the previous release. The new smart searching, filtering, and rating tools make photo management more useful, while color masking and color transfer are nice additions to its growing feature set. On the other hand, if you're not a Luminar Neo user, and perhaps you're just interested in its generative AI, I would recommend waiting for On One Photo Raw 2025 with generative AI coming later this month to see if it's any better. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you're upgrading to the new Luminar Neo 1.21 version and your thoughts on the release, write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.